for what it can throw at them. South Korea now, the semi-finals is Sandbox Gaming taking on Talon to run you through the action. Never met. Thank you very much, Rob. It's time to get stuck into this massive game. Andy, I am absolutely ecstatic. This should be a good one. Yeah, I'm really keen for this one too. It's been a long time since we've seen Theme Park be played as well. And well, it's always going to bring along the chaos, isn't it? It's one of those maps that because there's so much unfamiliarity to us on the broadcast, we always get to dissect some really exciting stuff. Look, it looks like the knock ban straight up from Talon. I do love banning that knock. If I look back, their last one, two, three, four, 21 games, they have only not banned it four times. So 17 out of their last 21 maps, they have banned that knock. They really don't like playing against that lurker. Well, you know what? Look, fair enough, especially on a map like Theme Park, right? Where the pushes can be so linear that sometimes on the attack, you have to send that X Factor lurk onto the other side of the map or through a window or something like that to try and catch the defense off guard. And not having to worry about knock means that the push is 100% going to be much more linear, easier to deal with. You don't need to keep track of someone that you can't look at through those active cameras. And I think it's a good move for Talon starting out in the defense. Interesting to see that Monty ban come through as well for Sandbox. Now, I haven't uh, watched a lot of the Talon games and seen a lot of Monty bans, but uh, historically, you know, the last time these teams played, there was a Monty ban. It came out on Bank. Sandbox have banned the Monty uh, against Cyclops, against BSG, uh, against Dumb One. So I think that Sandbox just really, if, if they see a specific team that has the Monty on a specific map, they want to get rid of it. So we're going to go down onto this ground floor bomb site first. Of course, it is Armory and Throne Room. Probably one of the more challenging uh, bomb sites to attack in most of Rainbow Six Siege, to be honest, bar maybe like Oregon Basement. But this one is a pretty tough one to get open as well. It's very fortified with, of course, all those three walls that can be quite challenging to open, especially with the Kaid on the board. There can be some really pesky spots for those electric laws near impossible to clear. I'm imagining like on that yellow wall, that type of thing. And so Sandbox have to make the choice. Are they going to go for something more direct or are they going to sweep the map and try and make use of that buck and play the vertical? Ooh, a bit of an Amaru pick. Is this some early map control, perhaps? Marble is barricading up the break room. That's the typical point of entry for an Amaru player. It's not going to be as easy to sneak in, though, with that barricade up. What's the play here for Sandbox? Seems like just probing around the map for now. We've got players situated over on this cash side as well as the cafe side of the map looking out to open up any of the windows, get some drones in on the adjacent side of the map to see exactly what the roam is looking like. Now that hatch that they have just seen has been electrified and there is a roam of playing inside of that top floor. So Sandbox now deciding, are they going to dedicate their resources to clearing this or are they going to start to hit the bomb site? A lot of pressure on the bomb site here. Zenvi Taylor breaches open their yellow wall. Up goes the Amaru. And the opener is Royboy taking down Mephi. What a play here from Marble. An impact to take down Good Boy. As we finally see an opening for Sandbox. It's MV Taylor, but it's not going to last very long at all as Demic has fallen. Marble continuing to be deadly on this roam. A Rikaze, an accidental self flash. But MV Taylor comes in for the pinch. Traded once again. Talent do not want to give up. Ellen are absolutely relentless on this roam that they've got going on the top floor. Players even relocating from that ground floor going back up. And Pisa's like, well, look, we're in the man advantage now. It's time to fall back to the site and play it safe. And Arakaze, even though he does have those two exothermic charges in his pocket, even if he gets the wall open, it's going to be a pretty tall order to clear all three players. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a painful minute here for poor Arakaze, but the best player in the league. Two flashes to work with. Oh, that electric wall is going to be a real pain, though. Not able to open up that wall. Be very difficult to isolate fights. Yeah, no, this is going to be such a tough one. All three Talon players, very disciplined at the moment on the site, not looking for that peak. Also one on two. 
marginally easier than a one on three, so none of them want to give away their life. And Arakaze, as he makes his way down these yellow stairs, let's just talk about the previous round, the round that has just gone by. I think that Sandbox, yeah, they went for their room clear, and yes, it was multifaceted through many points of entry in the top floor, but Talon were very on the ball that they immediately took those entry denial fights. And Arakaze here going for his last attempt through the split door, flashbang in hand. Even that caught by Wamai Magnet, and all three Talon players in his <laughs> line of sight, and he can take him down. Yeah, nice easy close there for Roy Boy. Not a great start there for Sandbox, but to be expected for Talon. I actually said on the desk that Talon start on the attack, and I was wrong. I was a bit confused when I saw it noted down that they start on the attack, because of course, if uh, Sandbox gets to choose the map, typically that means that Talon will get to choose the starting side. Most teams prefer theme park defense. We see it in the stats. The Sandbox, they are absolutely mean on their defense. 83% win rate on this map. So definitely Talon would not want to start going up against that. Sandbox are looking for something a little more special on this second attack here. We've got the Glaz in the lineup as long as, uh, as long long alongside the Ying, a good grief. And of course, Good Boy has been given the Ash license to go in real quick. And so I think from Sandbox, they might be able to catch Talon off guard if they are not on the ball this time around. Exciting, very exciting. Batch is in as well, so could make quick work of any wall denial there. Only seems to be that mute. Demix getting some info early. Yeah, this is definitely a rush. When you're droning out the site at a pro level, you're not doing it to find out where the bomb site is. You're doing it to find out what is the setup. How many players are here? Can we go for this rush? And that seems like the case. Mephi, of course, all five Samlox players spawning on their own adjacent, uh, on their own sides of the map, just adjacent to each other, but not on the same spawn point as they can put these pressure on these windows early on open up what you will and force the talent players to to keep themselves guessing right you, you don't want to telegraph the push that you're going for so right now all of sandbox playing exterior to the building so far not making their way in just yet talent are not going to know what's going to hit them it is very difficult to rush this bomb site there's uh, not a lot of ways to get directly into sight. You can drop the hallway hatch, but that's just into the hallway. You can repel in a break room that's still just a buffer room. Cafe, again, be quite a choke point. Talon's still extending their roam, as you can see, in Sandbox. Not sure if this is a rush after all, as they do seem to be droning out this cash side. Now it's feeling the pressure as Effie is on entry. Yeah, it actually seems like they've changed their mind about this push. Maybe they have some info on the site that we have not seen yet, and they've decided that, in fact, the rush is ill-advised, and instead, looking for this map sweep, one smoke canister is going to block out Mephi from progressing any further inside of the office position, and Talon's starting to relocate into that central part of the map, ready to contest the onslaught as it comes through waiting. It's about looking for an opening here. Demic has spotted. The map control has been forfeited. Talon have fallen away from initiation, reinforced over the wall. That should be no stress for Arakaze. He still has that Thermite. Worried about a flank here, and the drone spots out that player inside of Throne and Armory, and Marble goes down. He's going to have to sit on cams the rest of the round. Sandbox now making their way in through this eastern side of the map, but like we saw earlier, that rotation hole onto the bomb site has been closed off by the defense, and it's going to force the combination of those statue EMPs and thermites to start to make to work on these walls and plan out the next stage of the attack. Yeah, Maddie, this has been uh, very slow, hasn't it, for an attack? Finally, the breach goes down, but uh, Mies has done a bit of damage here. Looking very awkward. This Demic takes a lot of damage here. On the repel, falls on off. Knows that there's a player in break, but how to clear them? Ooh, tricky position for the defenders now. That break room position no longer viable to play in as the adjacent wall has been breached. Now the attack looking for that execute. Gonna have to be a mean one as well, Demic, to push in through Cafe. Misa, though, survives the flashes and goes for the repeat. The Warden is perfect, but the trade is as well. Mephi, the last man standing in a 1v1 onto Roy Boy. The pre fire, is it going to be enough time? Doesn't let him reach him. Sandbox just fumbling at the final moment. Huge clutch from Roy Boy.
such a close execute for them. They were able to go in and almost make the trades work out in their favor. But when you leave it too little, too late, the clock comes back to bite you. And the defense able to close out yet another one for Talon. Well, at least it was a lot closer than the first round, eh, Mandy? Sandbox looked a lot better there. Yeah, exactly. That's all right. I think Sandbox, honestly, I think that their their read into yeah, not going for the rush it spells some good, good signs for me. They've got drones in the bomb site and they've seen what's there and they go, look, we have the lineup for it, but let's not do it. it it's not a good idea. They, they know what's happening. They have the utility yeah, to deal with it. Something I think to keep in mind was that warden that was sitting on the site, right? Even if the Ying was aiding the rush if the warden was a, in a very central part to that rush he definitely could have shut it down it just felt like sandbox made the more mature decision there to actually not go for it and sweep the map instead and even though it did come down to the dying seconds of the round i think it was a good choice from them and well hopefully this round is of close nature as well five seconds left before not a good pre-play here from sandbox i do really love this as well Attackers objective maybe to get some early control downstairs the main operator I'm looking at on the attacking side that's changed up is Good Boy on the IQ. Now, we did see some great Valkyrie play in the last round. Didn't necessarily see where all those cameras were placed, but I've no doubt that Talon's aggression and retreat was always powered by that info. Talon once again starting out on this extension horizontally onto the other side of the map as Sandbox looking to start out in cafe this time. This is something that we haven't seen seen them do quite before where they all convene over on this western side of the map and see what they can achieve on a sweep. Unfortunately, Roy Boy though, taking down Good Boy. Well, there you go. That's going to be a, a tough uh, engagement to talk about through boy. this series, isn't it? Who is the best boy? Apparently, it's Roy Boy. And now <laughs> hey, Sandbox down in the so man far. advantage. Yeah, he has been good, actually. But like, once again, Sandbox, when you're down in the man count on a map like Theme Park, it can be quite challenging. When push comes to shove at that execute, if you don't have the numbers advantage to go for the Flood, it certainly shuts out a type of execute that you can go for. Also denying the uh, hunting of Valkyrie cameras by IQ. Play to lose. Arkaze on for the entry. Fragmite. Mesa has already done a bit more damage on the Sandbox. Taylor desperately repelling on inside, but it's tit for tat. Sandbox have found two picks back. Misa low HP, but still steals a headshot before falling. 2v2 now. Panos likely has a lot of information from his cams. His teammates will be calling. Now the decision to play aggressive, to retake, or to wait for the onslaught. And once again, just so aggressive and relentless from Talon. They never want to give up this room. They don't ever fall off from it. They're like, we are here and we are staying here. There is no way that Misa was going to be able to get out of the position that he was in. But just look at the setup that, that Talon have got on this defense. That wall is gaping wide open with a rotation hole that they can't reinforce off anymore. A player already there inside of that bunk position. And Arakaja as well, even getting this additional line of sight onto the bomb site is going to make it very hard for the defense to retake inside of initiation. Yeah, this is great now for Sandbox. Good information on the drone. Arakaja holding the deep angle. Flashes to go in. He's the one with the diffuser and he gets nice behind the shrine itself. Envy Taylor, the player to cover. Top fragger on his team. And this is perfect now from Sandbox. Those gases from Roy Boy do not seem to land. It's going to be an ambitious retake now. Arakaza to peek on out perfectly. Roy Boy once again in the 1vx, but I don't think he's got it this time around. SMG11 to try and duel, but Arakaza to close. Goes from the donut to the plant and the 2k. Finally, a first round on the board for Sandbox. And once again, the the trade game that is going on from that early to mid game has been so much fun to watch for us, right? When they jump in, the defenders, they don't fall off. They're sitting there and they are standing their ground. And really, Sandbox are doing such a great job to be able to make the trades work in their favor, even dropping the hatch in tandem. We're getting break room control as well as the entry flushing them into those lines of sight. It's all just so well coordinated okay, for a team of what we know to be gunners as well, right, Dev? It is so strange to see Arakaje on Thermite. 
right? Especially with his history as a fragger, it is crazy to see that the front line of all of this is Good Boy, and it's people like Demic as well, and that it's got all these really highly rated players on your supporting roles instead. Which I think is great, because we saw it last round, Good Boy went down early, doesn't matter, Arakaze still fearlessly enters Cafe, he doesn't care that he's the Thermite, doesn't care that... There's potential util to be lost in that round. It didn't matter anyway. There was no need for any hard breach uh, based on the setup from Talon. But it goes to show you put these fraggers on support operators, and then even when your fraggers die, you still have secondary fraggers on these supports mm -hmm. that have no fear whatsoever on the entry. Now, as we go back to Armory Throne, the first bomb site we saw from Talon. And uh, we need to see something a little bit better here from Sandbox to keep pace. Slightly different philosophy, it seems like, from Sandbox as well. This is the first time that we've seen four out of the five players all spawn in the same spawn on one side of the map as well. It would indicate to me that they are actually going to dedicate themselves to one type of push, whether it's more direct, or whether they actually decide to sweep the top floor. Keep in mind, they don't really have any vertical that they can utilize on the top floor, so perhaps they're going to forego the roam here and just try and directly hit inside of that maintenance room and inside of barrels. Well, there is a bit of droning going on upstairs. Ace has now shot two, and the Docker B call goes out. Nephi was the first picked the last time Sandbox played this site. Ace is playing quite a powerful position, but vulnerable if Sandbox work together to clear him. Oh, and Demic holding down the long line of sight inside of that waiting hallway as Misa is going to start to play his live oh. two flashbangs go, and he goes for the jump out. But Arakaza can shut him down. Yeah, great pick there for Sandbox. And typically, it's been the roam that's really been a hindrance for them, and already one element of that has been dealt with. Panos is still up here in office. He's made himself a rotate to retreat, and he's taken ahead with him. See you later, former teammate. Demic goes down. Marble now the second point of contest for Talon and is actually going to decide to fall back a bit closer to his teammate instead and forfeit more of that control of the top floor to Sandbox. Once again for Sandbox there isn't a whole lot that they can do with this top floor control so I imagine at this point they can just establish themselves to make sure that they that Talon plays can't retake the top floor. You don't exactly want to be pushing any further ahead unless you want to be chasing the kills so we can see now Arakazo jumping down inside of maintenance and will start to make use of this wall. Comes the Thatcher and out goes the Thermite. Will be a nice breach. Arakaz are just watching for aggression. We know that Talon like to employ it. Looks like some of these roamers from Talon have also retreated back. I believe that was Marble back from Split. Kanos going for the run out and that aggression read perfectly by Soundbox. Yeah, pretty ill-advised push and punished even twice by NB Taylor. Now only two Talon players left and only one on the site and another still at large. Still two C4s to work with, but I don't think they've got quite the arms needed to land that one. Over it goes by Sayora, does not find a thing. 4v1 now in the retake, the smoke covering perfectly and good boy, a nice little quick peek. And a great attack there onto Armory Throne Room by Sandbox to even the score. I like that from Sandbox. They dedicated themselves to getting what was mission critical to their lineup. Like like we pointed out very early on in the round, they in fact did not have vertical gameplay. And so all they needed to do was establish that top floor control and make sure that defenders couldn't retake into the top of Dragon. That was the whole idea of that attack strategy. And then that in tandem were getting the maintenance wall open and lots of ill-advised peaks from Talon as we saw window jump outs, okay, peeking through located. breaches, over rotating, that kind of thing. There was a sandbox play that was holding down that long line of sight. And even though the push was linear, it worked out in their favor. That round feels like a turning point to me, Mandy. Sandbox have broken through onto that very difficult bomb site to attack, forcing Talon now to make the decision of retrying it or going to uh, Bunk Daycare, which is now unlocked as it's been two rounds since they won it. Now, this was only won by Talon in a 1v1 clutch from Roy Boy. So, despite Talon starting strong here, they are on the favored side of defense, and I think Sandbox have started to read into these setups. And we'll, we might just get to see a bit of the sandbox dominance on theme that we expected. We discussed the map veto. 
I actually totally agree with you. I think that Sandbox are really starting to get the formula of how to deal with these talent players, right? They're not willing to play these, well, in, at least in that last round, they weren't willing to play that scrappy early to mid game uh, control. They weren't willing to take those fights anymore because they knew that there would be a talent player to meet them at their doorstep. They went for something a lot more linear. And in fact, they actually punished the aggression of those talent players. I wonder if they're going to do the same thing here as well. Are they going to go for that map sweep across or are they going to directly hit the bombs? You just need to look at MV Taylor's kills, eight so far in the four rounds we've had, to see how much uh, Sandbox have been punishing the aggression from Talon. MV Taylor's the guy who's always just holding down an angle onto a potential aggressive place. He got two kills on the breach last round from that. What is this? A fake rush bait, it seems. Arakaze smokes and flashes in, perhaps to cover... MV Taylor going for this uh, breach on the break wall, but worried about a run out now. Oops, that was a bit of a miss. Breach goes out again. Or direct attack this time from Sandbox though, Dev. Uh, like I said before, they're not willing to go for these probe attacks where they're taking one-to-one -one engagements anymore. They're convening themselves as a five-man and only taking one side of the map. We've got Good Boy down below. He's got those grenades in hand. In fact, only one left in his pocket, while the rest of them shape around outside a cafe, shape around outside break room, ready to hit a little bit closer to the actual bomb site itself. Talon has surely got to be feeling quite a bit of anxiety here while they are just sitting and waiting patiently. As the time ticks away, they know that Sandbox are cooking something up. Here comes Arakaze with another Candela. Misa not too stressed about that. He is the Warden after all. Misa's in exactly the right position to take this one-on-one -on -one gunfight in Sandbox. I'm starting to get worried for their progression through the map. Now, really, there's only one player that has stepped foot inside of the actual map, and that was Good Boy from down below. The rest of the players still external to the map. There's only 45 seconds left to go, Dev. It just feels like there's not enough time for them to make their way in and work through this bombsite. This will be desperate. Oh, Kanos, you can't lose those, man! But Demic punishes him. And a great pick as well for Envy Taylor. So, time was of the essence, but Sandbox were ready for it. Roy Boy once again stepping up when in a pinch he finds the double. Seora as well to join in the action. Mises has got break on lockdown. And now it's just Envy Taylor now in the 1v2. Already broken 10 kills, but he's going to have to do even more than that now in the clutch. Diffuser in pocket, and Roy Boy once again is a machine on the anchor play. Talon, recompose. Actually, really fantastic discipline as well from those Talon players. Because the Sandbox players had absolutely given them not a single inch of where their whereabouts were on the map, it can get very easy for the defenders to get antsy and try and look for those attackers, go hunting for them, and eventually probably run into their lines of sight. We saw Kanos fall into that trap, and that worked really well for Sandbox over on the dragon side of the map. But all the anchors on the bomb site, as soon as they heard that intel go out, as soon as that comm came from uh, from Kanos down in the grave, they all tra trained their sights onto that crash side of the map and were able to take down the Sandbox place as they went for that last second ditch push. And that composure from them is a really fantastic sign. There's a lot of really tight rounds here, Mandy. With only one round where there's been four players alive left on the winning team, and that was the Throne Armory attack from Sandbox just two rounds ago. Every other round has been one player, two players, or three players left alive. It's been a tight fight. Ten seconds remaining. Talon, though, going back down to this Armory throne room for the final round of the half. Looking to go 4-2, it would be big if they could. You talked about how good Sandbox are on their defense. 83% defensive win rate in their last four games on this map, all of which they have won. Talon are about to have to start attacking those Sandbox defense, so they need to make the most of this first half.
I think the thing about the sandbox attack is that it, it's sort of on another level of attack because of the level of unpredictability and how fluid and well drilled their strats are on this map, I think. The way that sandbox are able to play it, they're not falling into the trap of leaning into the sort of the three highways, as I like to call it, of theme park, where they get choked out inside of uh, initiation, they get choked out inside of uh, cash and then office and then through the hallway. They never seem to get stuck in those parts of the maps. So they always have a way of, of dealing with it and traversing through that section. Whereas I think for Talon, they'll have to replicate that one once they get onto their attacking half, right? I feel like the proficiency on theme park goes into how they attack because really it's it's quite easy to defend all these choke points. And for Talon, I think they're using that to their advantage so far, but they're going to be tested in just around later. The defense is once again getting tested here because they did lose this armory thrown last time. And instead of really holding on aggressively to cash, which punished these talent players last time, they're actually retreating. So trying to shoot a couple drones and then fall back. But Sandbox still have seven drones up. They've done exceptionally well on this clear so far. And Mesa not looking to forfeit too much map control, but also doesn't want to lose his life. So it's a huge risk reward game here for Talon. Well, I think it is a risk reward game, but they're taking far less risks than they did previously. They're leaning into the architecture of theme park, in my opinion. This map is naturally quite challenging to traverse through. There's a lot of points where the attacks can get stuck anyway. So I think that Talon playing a more conservative, uh, conservative passive game against these guys would work out in their favor. Now, keep in mind that Sandbox don't really sweep the map anyway. They seem to always go for this more direct attack inside of maintenance, and well, this time they have impact tricks to try and deal with that wall. Ooh! Great first nade, though. It's gonna take out Marble. Not sure if he had impacts for the juggle, but Sayora has now used all of his. The strat here from Talon was very clearly to counter the ace with impacts, but Sandbox have dealt with it handily. And now up in the man advantage, but with only 30 seconds left to go, Sandbox can start to suffocate out that bomb site. Line of sight for Envy Taylor is trained on that player just behind the throne room, and the diffuser in the hands of Arakage. Envy's just waiting for that head to pop up and play whack a mole. Camos does find one, and it's difficult now for the entry of Sandbox. And, uh, well, difficult may be an understatement. They found a single down. As Arakage is trying to force down this plan, is the cover there from Envy? It's absolutely not gonna work. Roy Boy joins in the fun and a great round there for Talon to win their defensive half. Came along like an assassin and stabbed him in the back there as he went for the plant. That was some great composure from Talon to finally close out that round. The last time that we saw them play that defense in the basement, there was so many ill-advised peaks. They were peeking windows, peeking breaches. With that time they thought, Look, Sandbox only really create one point of entry into the bomb site, and that's the breach. So let's just hold a crossfire on it. Simple as you do it, and Talon, with that added caution and with that discipline, are able to close out and shut down the execute as it came through from Sandbox. Oh, we Mandy, this uh, might be a tighter game than we expected. Yes, it is defense, but a 4 2 is still a 4 2 for Talon. Sandbox going to have to win five defenses here out of six in order to guarantee a regulation win. Otherwise, Talon could at minimum push OT, and if that happens, then all bets are off in my mind. Talon already exceeding my expectations here on theme, which is an excellent sign for them for the rest of the series. Something that I'm immediately noticing about the difference between the Talon and Sandbox defenses is just straight up the operator lineup that they're bringing along, right? Sandbox are leaning into that Solace, for example. Not only that, but they're leaning into it in tandem with those Yoko drones on the Echo. So playing into this info game and making sure that they are following Talon every step of this methodical push that they might have as they clear through the map. It can be very challenging to sweep the map against uh, against an operator like Solus against a Mozzie because of that info denial, and only not only that, but you're telegraphing your push so much as well. Rakage spotted the player droning on the balcony. Not sure if there are two. Also spotted the drone. I think he's now spotted two players at least pushing him cash. That's good info for Sandbox to rotate their roam. But Misa finds him. This is a perfect opener. Talon are amazing me right now. They're looking phenomenal here. 
They are certainly looking very impressive on theme park for a map that we thought was going to be so sandbox sided. The rest of sandbox, though, the roam has not quite given up yet. They're just starting to cool their way, heal the lays of the onions back through the map. Meanwhile, Talon are able to make their way in with that buck. Misa can start to make use of that vertical, but they don't want to start that until they're 100% sure that there are no roamers on the top floor. Indeed, there are none. In a matter of time for Talon to find that out. Jackal will as well help with that information gathering. Kanos is all the way down to 0.5 on white stairs. There are still a couple of roamers alive. Looking to hold on to some drug control. We did see at the start of the round a great drone from Royboy in that area. So I just think it's a matter of time before Talon hunt down these roamers. Oh, and this is such a tricky spot for Mephi. He's being pinged over and over again by that trackle of the jackal. And now he's stuck inside of that Ooh. dragon position. He might be able to get away from his spot inside of the hallway, but in fact not still taking the engagement. That 1.5x in hand, and well, Misa can actually take down Good Boy on the site. But Mephi's found an impactful kill. Demix still alive on site to keep affairs in order for Sandbox, but an overpeak from Envy Taylor may punish him and his team. 3v2 Talon in the advantage. Look, they may be in the advantage, but the mozzie roam of Mephi is still at large now. He is on 1 HP, but there are only 30 seconds left. Do you dedicate that utility to clearing the roam, or do you just say, look, it's a 1 on 3 on site, let's go for it, and that seems like what they want to do. We'll need to be explosive on the execute. Demix gonna have to clutch up big. The sandbox as Mephi has gone down. Misa to force down this plant. An impact may spell the difference. A second to follow gets the kill. It is a one versus one for Demic against his former team. Marble looking to cover and he does it to perfection for Talon. They're stealing the limelight here on theme. This is so exciting for Talon. They really cleared through that top floor with such proficiency. I completely forgot, Dev, that Jackal was a thing in the game. Honestly, <laughs> I completely, entirely forgot that that was a thing that they could have done. And Sandbox didn't do it at all when they were attacking, right? They, they went for these super probie attacks. There was a lot of operators that had self-sufficient utility. They were trying to take one-to-ones. Whereas these guys on Talon, they're like, we have Jackal up. We have Buck up. We should just take the top floor ASAP and then make use of that vertical. It just seems like the simple answer that, honestly, I, com I can't believe that we've completely missed watching Sandbox's attack. Talon are bringing some new ideas. They're bringing something fresh that we haven't seen from Sandbox all game long, and it is punishing. Sandbox, what a roam clear. Perfection. An opening kill from Mesa at the start of the round. Arakaze was meant to be the disruptor, meant to be that roaming solace, denying information, gaining information, making plays, giving Talon a headache. Instead, he enabled Talon an advantage that now has led them a three-round lead on their opponents. Talon as well identifying that sandbox and not going to go back down to that ground floor bomb site. They're not going to repeat it and they've actually decided to completely change their lineup from a roam clear centric lineup. They've gotten rid of the jackal, they've gotten rid of the bark and now they're going on to these more probe like operators where you have, you've got the lion that can definitely shut down some of these cutoffs. You've got the ying as well that can make these executes really explosive and it's even aided by the dokubi so that they can check rooms that are in close vicinity to them as they try and hop in through the map. Starting to feel scared here for Sandbox. This is their map pick. This is their favored side. Need to start raking up some wins. Talon have made their way in the building down below. Marble's got nades in pocket. He's got info. Could enable some vertical play. Yana ahead of him. He's got some information. He's just going to pre-nade the stairs. The E1D to lock Mephi in place. The nade not quite deep enough to deal a fatal blow. And he's still going to hold on to this position as well. He's got the game sense to think that Talon are probably not going to drone up these arcade stairs just yet. He can sit around for a little bit longer and that puts Kanos' position under threat as these two operators with grenades start to send them up through the floor, try and play that impromptu vertical game. Kanos just still continuing to play this game below. 
Still one more nade in pocket. Where is this pressure going down? It looks like it's the battle for Cafe. There's Misa, low on HP, flashing himself forward. Kanos to deliver his last nade directly into an ADS. Talon struggling now to sink their teeth in. Mm, unfortunately, Talon seems to be playing into the defense of Sandbox just a little bit. It feels like three or four of these Sandbox players were so ready for that Arcade Stairs push, but I bite my words immediately. That Flood through the Arcade Stairs coming up, immediately <laughs> traded back and forth, and now in the two-on-two. -two. Demic just stood up inside of Daycare and got three kills. And that has even up the numbers now. Talon in a 2v2. 30 seconds. Roy Boy making his way in from break. SMG 12 in hand. Arakaze, his position revealed by the audio cue as he tries to fall back. Sayora to start planting. Where is Envy Taylor? Coming up the yellow stairs now as Roy Boy is the player to cover. DMR in pocket, but what a play! Beautiful shot from Arakaze makes this a 1v2 for Sayora. Dancing around between the bomb sites, reveals his position with a preemptive spray, and he's taken out. What a retake. Patience played to perfection for Sandbox. Really nice retake from them, and I think that the honus of that entire defense was really that kid's position. They seemed to know exactly what Talon were going for. They realized that they had control of that bottom floor with all those nades that were flying through the floor and onto the balconies, and they thought, Someone's about to walk in cafe. Someone's about to walk up the arcade stairs. And really, they had most of their defenders that were very ready to take those engagements. And even though Flood is always going to be scrappy, there are so many bodies that are being thrown at the bomb site. Sandbox were there and they were ready to deal with it. And that retake was played to perfection. Arakaze first with that Ferrari peek onto the player with the DMR and the two on one. Amazingly coordinated by them. Well, it was a very tight round. That gets Sandbox back in the game, but still trailing by two. And my concern for them has not yet left, Mandy. I am still very worried for Sandbox. Talon find a single attack here, and they have map point on their opponent's map pick. I'm not sure if that causes quite alarm bells for me. Yes, they are definitely coming close to running away with the scoreboard, but I think that Sandbox deciding that they don't want to go down to that basement bomb site and instead play these top floor bomb sites instead actually isn't a terrible idea. I feel like when you go down to that basement bomb site, yes, it is difficult to, to open up, but Talon seems to have a good formula for it, right? Whereas now that they've switched onto these top floor bomb sites, it's forcing Talon to test a new formula and play a different style of attack. You can't really roam clear per se on these top floor bomb sites because it's kind of where the bomb site is already. Both of them play out pretty similarly the way that you defend them and so I think for Talon they're struggling a little bit with these direct type of attacks. It's less of a roam on the top floor and more of an extension really. You just turn exactly. the bomb site is half the top floor, you turn it into the hole on the top floor and you hold on for dear life. This is going to make this difficult though. It doesn't matter how many magnets you got Demic, your shield is down. And that's going to force him off of that position just next to the cargo box. But he still has these lines of sight to play with just adjacent to his original power position. Not only that, but Good Boy is going to be supporting him from inside of that top arcade balcony. It's going to prevent any jump-ins through the window. The Flores can come in with some more info, but Good Boy able to take down Kenos. Good signs for Sandbox. Two nades and lots of info on the Gemini's down. As Misa continues to use these Roteros. Talon have failed to take map control as of yet. Misa entry, but falls immediately. Good boy has been so sharp today. Does find a response, but uh, it's not looking so great here for Talon. Falling apart, has the attack. And Sandbox uh, just have one more player to find. Aura is eventually finished off with an impact. And a banging round for Sandbox. And I think it's leaning in once again to the point that we spoke about what felt like about 30 seconds ago, not that long ago, Dev, where that top floor bombsite is really just an extension. 
right? It's just an extension onto the map rather than a full roam game. And what, although Talon played an extremely good roam game when it was that bottom floor bomb site, they struggled to play the entries straight into the map. They had all these sandbox players that were contesting them as they tried to make their way and hop through windows, run in through doors, because those are your more defender-sided gunfights, right? And so I think that for sandbox, Testing them on a different type of attack was really the right macro play to go for. But what that means is it's forced them to go back down to this ground floor bomb site. And what are the sandbox going to do about it? Are they going to continue to contest that roam or are they just going to give up on it? Yeah, that's the real concern for me. This roam game just was not it for sandbox. Telena once again bringing that jackal, the Dockerby jackal combo. So good for getting information on those roamers. So it does seem like Sandbox are dedicating some of those, some of that utility, some of that setup into that top floor to see what they can get. We've got a few rotation holes inside of uh, Initiation, inside of Office. It's going to allow a little bit of mobility there. Not only that, but Envy is even read into the fact that Talon might go and replicate a similar attack to what they did and is going to put some cams more close to the bomb site. Try and get a read as to whether Talon are going to do something more direct or whether they're going to go for a sweep. Now the lineup for Talon with Jackal would indicate to me that they are actually going to try and once again take that full map control. My question is, where's Sandbox? These drones have been so good. Also, just going to say, Royboy has been unreal. SMG 12 on the attack on Dockerby, the smoke play on defense, just such a consistent fragger. A new player for Talon as well, of course. He's typically that backstab player for their side, that lurker. Always valuable in a pinch as well, but first step is the entry. Good boys, cap can traps have been spotted, some at least. Never underestimate those little EDDs. They can catch even the most experienced players out. I like this room better from Sandbox. They're not starting out nearly as close to the entry points inside of Cache where they can be caught out. And they're playing a little bit further back in a position that's easier to fall back from, is more passive. Not only that, but they've put, I think it's three 1.5x operators on this top floor. Okay, never mind. Two of the three of them holding down these really long lines of sight across the oh, map. Right. And that executed to perfection. Mephi can take down Marble. Now a five on three advantage. Put down to a four and three advantage is looking good for Sandbox. The team turns out all they needed was to win this Rome game, which they absolutely have so far. My question: How long do they try to cling on to it? Because every moment longer they stay is another chance for Talon to bring it back on their side. And Akaze gets one more before falling back, but Good Boy is still here inside a cafe, on an off angle. Spots out the player, but Sayora wins the fight, so that's pretty big here for Talon. They've started to claw back that man advantage. This is what dreams are made of. 2v4, 2v5 now becoming a 2v3. Some real strong positions on site, though, for Sandbox. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough dreams. Even though they're made of them, because there's only 30 seconds left to go, that really is not a whole lot of time to make use of that vertical and get a wall open and get the bomb on the ground, or whatever Talon want to try and do from here out. There are not a lot of options. There are not a lot of viable problem-solving options left for them to go. It's just time to get a wriggle on. And Arakaze is the pivotal player here in Furnace. He doesn't have a shield, though, and he's going to get flashed to all hell. Talon now looking to take him down. Perfect play from Sayora. That gives him a chance now to cover the plant. There's absolutely no way that just happened. I can't believe it. What an attack and the 2v5 dream is alive. I cannot believe they managed to execute that 2 on 3 together. Both of them dropped the hatch at the same time. They went back to back, gun fighting either side, right? One of them fought the left side of split. The other one fought the right side of split. And they both just backed themselves in to win their ones. And they closed out the round off the back of that. What a fantastic little tiny hatch drop back to back teamwork that they were able to make work the dream and eventually close it out to match point. Wow. This is a massive moment for Talon now. Winning a round like that, it pumps you up. They're looking pretty chilled at the moment. You can see in their team house, quite relaxed, focused, lays it in.
taken their tactical timeout. Something you'll notice both of these teams here have their team houses. The chemistry is on point. I mean, imagine the vibes after winning a two versus five when you're sitting next to the player you just clutched up with massively. What a boon, what a boost to their ego, to their chances of winning the game now, closing out two match points. And these guys are totally proving our expectations wrong. We thought that this was going to be a sandbox map through and through. These guys have got some super dominant performances on this map. Almost every time that they've taken a team to it, it's been like a 7-2, a 7-3 or something like that. But Talon are about to take them down just one round, one attack away from doing it. And it makes me question what is going on for Sandbox? What is it about this defense formula that has changed that isn't working out for them anymore? I'm scared now, Mandy. I, I really am. I said it before, but it's starting to sink in. This is Sandbox's map pick, a map that they have not lost the last four times they have played it. Talon, on contrast, don't play a lot of theme park. This is not a map that we have seen a lot of globally at all, right? Five out of 115 plus plays in the Blast Rainbow Six program this year. Talon are showing that they can do the goods. They can deliver massive here on this very unlikely map pick. And here we go once again for Sandbox, not leaning into that ground floor defense. They really don't like defending the ground floor. Hey, both times that they've tried to do it, they have failed. And now they can go back to the comfort of this top floor bomb site. Now, if Sandbox can once again pull the heroics of winning both of these top floor bomb sites, they will be back up to a 6-6 and they will be able to push over time. So it's really on the onus of talent here to come up with an attacking formula onto this top floor that is going to work out for them because both the attempts last time, they didn't work. They were failures. I love and seeing the Brava pick. This may be one of the first Brava picks, picks that you and I have casted, Mandy. I think we've talked about her a little bit, but we're yeah. now seeing Sayora bring it in. Bomb located by attackers. This is exciting. I, I'm curious about what the interactions might be that are worthwhile, though, right? With those, uh, with those Brava picks, I suppose you could take down some of those Belushi Banshees, which might make the entry easier into some parts of the map or something like that. But it makes me wonder exactly what value they've been able to find out of those drones. Oh, not only that, but they've got even more special drones. The special squad coming through as another Rotero drone being sent through Cafe. They're putting a lot of pressure into clearing this power position, into making sure that entries can get their way into Cafe for a much more direct attack onto the bomb site. It's another moment of quiet as Talon prepare their incision. Repel in for Roy Boy. He's right up close to the bomb site now. He's got break room control and Talon have two openings. There's no way it's going down like this, man. He's sandbox in absolute shambles. It's just Arakaze, the best player in Korea who's going to have to have the play of his career to keep his team in their map pick. Reveals his position. The cross is cut perfectly by Roy Boy in break, and there's no way this diffuser plant is getting denied. That locks it in for Talon. Against all odds, they can hardly believe it. They've taken the map over Sandbox. And in such dominant fashion as well, to close out that final round, I was scared for them. I thought, oh gosh, they're going back up to this top floor bomb site once again. But they definitely put.